Canada's Prime Minister were to honestly show up to the next international event in a pussy hat, I frankly wouldn't be surprised. ISIS, state-sponsored terrorism, a global refugee crisis, the possible end of NAFTA, the rise of Russia and China, North Korean missiles, Iranian missiles, ballooning debt, youth unemployment. And our guy picks feminism as his thing, literally. Is it just me or is feminism the only legacy that Justin Trudeau was working towards? So by now you've probably already heard that Justin Trudeau and President Trump had lunch together. Yeah, Japan's prime minister spent three days with Trump, landing him a diplomatic hole in one, but Canada's guy, well Canada, you, you know, America's neighbor, the folks who share the longest undefended border in the world with Trump, yeah, we did lunch. Now, to be fair, I get why Trudeau's team restricted his time with the newly minted president. Trudeau is really good at first impressions, especially if you're partial to a faint lisp and hair flips. But the guy is also prone to bozo eruptions if you leave the spotlight on him for too long. Queen of Canada, her hairs. So that we can grow the economy from the heart outwards. That this uh, tax, uh, this uh, pricing. Uh, let's just get this over with. Luckily, though, conditions were perfect for Canada's PM. Trump appeared to be totally disengaged, dutifully reading from his notes without interest in Trudeau's preachy tone. While it might have had something to do with the fact that he insisted on breaking out into French every five seconds, and, as a backdrop, Trudeau had Canadian trade on his side. Three states that were the cause for Trump's election win, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, well, they are all unusually exposed to trade with Canada. Hundreds of thousands of jobs and roughly one-third of all their exports relying on healthy Canadian trade. If you consider that, alongside the fact that Trudeau's got all these friendlies in media, like those who turned a millisecond smug look on Trudeau's face into fodder for a who's the alpha male now freeze frame, misleading as that was, well, suffice to say, a lot was working in Trudeau's favor this week. And frankly, with only three hours stateside, I wasn't expecting Trudeau to show up with a shopping list of what he'd like to be done. Just show up, don't screw up, and if possible, ask the president not to inflict as existential damage to Canada's trading economy. But no, our prime minister had other plans. Justin Trudeau couldn't let the photo op go to waste without exploiting it for some net virtue signaling good. And so, Justin Trudeau flew all the way to Washington and had three precious hours with the new president against the backdrop of a world barely kept from falling apart. And Canada's prime minister, he decides to talk about women in the workplace. We know that ensuring equal opportunities for women in the workforce is essential for growing the economy and maintaining American and Canadian competitiveness on the world stage. As such, the President and I have agreed to the creation of the Canada-United States Council for Advancement of Women Entrepreneurs and Business Leaders. It's so damn cringeworthy. It's so lame and out of touch. It's so obviously nothing more than a very public ego massage for a prime minister who's so obsessed with virtue signaling that he can't see that there's real work to be done. But it's not the first time he's done this. Literally every time Trudeau leaves the country and K, he does it here too. It's just way more annoying and embarrassing when he does it abroad. Every time he lands on foreign soil, Trudeau can't help himself from talking about how much of a feminist he is. There's lots of things you can do to be a better feminist as a man, but here's a simple one. Uh, don't interrupt women. He does it at the United Nations. Saying loud and clearly that I am a feminist uh, <laughs> until... Hear me roar. And he does it at Davos. Uh, he is going to be growing up to be a feminist just like Dad. And by the way, we shouldn't be afraid of the word feminist. Yeah. Men and women mm. should use it to describe <laughs> themselves anytime they want. He even does it with American journalists. I talk about the fact that I'm a feminist as often mm -hmm. as I can, mm -hmm. and every time I do, it gets huge reaction and media reacts and the yeah. Twitterverse explodes and things like that because here I am saying I'm a yeah. feminist. I will keep saying that mm -hmm. until there is no more reaction. Okay, all these shudders and cringes aside, you know what the really sad part is? It's all one big fat lie. Justin Trudeau isn't a feminist. 
He's a fake feminist. The one thing he's known for, his legacy, it's all smoke and mirrors. You sit on a throne of lies. You know, my mom used to tell me talk is cheap. Actions speak louder than words. And when it comes to Justin Trudeau, his actions show that he is a fake feminist. Leaving aside that time that Trudeau forcibly elbowed a woman in the chest, Trudeau is infamous because it is the current year gender parity cabinet. Yeah, that was a lie too. Five of the 15 female cabinet ministers were originally appointed as quote, junior ministers. They were paid less, they had fewer responsibilities, and they had lower office budgets. Not a single man was appointed as a junior minister. Yeah, so much for gender parity, eh? That's because Justin Trudeau is a fake feminist. How else can you explain his attendance at a gender segregated mosque? And as I look at this beautiful room with the sisters upstairs, everyone here, the diversity uh, we have just uh, within this mosque. Sorry, JT, real feminists aren't cool with gender apartheid, just like real civil rights activists didn't stand for racially segregated buses. You have to pick. Are you about equality or aren't you? Real feminists also don't make a $15 billion sale of military hardware to a decidedly unegalitarian country like Saudi Arabia. You know, that country in which women aren't allowed to travel, drive, or receive an education without a man's permission. And real feminists aren't indifferent to the mass slaughter of unborn girls who are aborted just because they are girls. But yesterday you said you're happy with the status quo on abortion, but right now the status quo is that it's perfectly fine to abort a child because it's a girl. Do you have no problems with that? I will uh, leave discussions uh, uh, like that between uh, a woman and uh, the health professionals uh, uh, that she encounters. I don't think uh, that government should be in the business of legislating away people's rights, and that's why the Liberal Party is steadfast in this position. So, to be clear, you decidedly paid your female employees less than your male employees. You attend events in which women are segregated to the back of the room. You did billions worth of business with a regime that legally views women as inferior to men. And you love women's rights so much that you support their choice to gender selective abortions. Some feminist you are, Mr. Prime Minister. Some legacy. For the Rebel.media, I'm Faith Goldie. If you like what you just saw, click below and subscribe to our YouTube channel.